You are listening to Creating Active Lives with me, Sarah Blytho, and my regular weekly guests. And we are all here to share the research, the science, and the strategies, as well as some of the fun, to help you to create a more active life. Hello and welcome to Creating Active Lives with me, Sarah Belito, and my guest, Claire Jones from Your One Life Healthy Weight Solutions. We last saw Claire back in December where we were talking about healthy holiday habits, sort of kind of, I suppose, literally having your cake and eating it, <laughs> but without the necessarily the damage or the guilt or whatever that goes with it. However, as much as we all love a good habit and we have may have had good intentions it is entirely possible that um some of us maybe did overindulge or did overdo things and are are kind of now faced with the sort of weight gain or feeling rotten or feeling rough and just okay that didn't go the way I planned it to that didn't quite go the way I hoped Mm -hmm. I need to get back on track so Claire Mm -hmm. a little bit about you and Mm -hmm. how important not giving up at, at one of these little hurdles is yeah. why yeah. we need to get back on track. Yeah. So I think, you know, it's, it's important to um, remember that obviously, regardless of what we might like to think, there is no doubt that um, carrying extra weight does increase the risks to our health. And for me, in my own journey, that was quite a, a sort of stark realisation that, you know, if I didn't get a handle on my lifestyle, um, then, you know, I was storing up potentially some big problems for the future. And so the way that I see it is, you know, we can either do something about it um, and and improve our, our, you know, future and current health health, um, prospects, or we can choose to do nothing and then nothing changes. So if we give up, nothing changes. So yeah. every day that we have is a really good opportunity to um, to continue to to make improvements little by little. And one of the things that I often talk about with my clients and with my audience in general is the film Groundhog Day, because I absolutely love the um, the, the journey that he goes on in the film, the main character. And I would say to, to anyone listening, if you haven't watched Groundhog Day, watch yeah. it. If you have watched it, but perhaps aren't quite sure what I'm getting at, watch it again, because, you know, to begin with, he does try to, he's very frustrated that, you know, he keeps reliving the same day over and over again and nothing changes, but then he starts to change. And as he starts to change, he starts to do, because he's learning and he's not giving up and he continues to, obviously over, I don't know how many days he actually lived Groundhog Day, but it would have to have been thousands for the things that he actually achieved in the film. But, um, you know, the the point was that he turned the situation to his advantage and he he started to to learn um, from his mistakes, inverted commas. and, 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 And as a result, because he didn't give up, he then achieved great things. And, and it's was, recognizing each little tiny step, each day is an opportunity to build on the day before. That, that's it. And, it. and his day is repeated, not because he didn't make the changes or do the different things. Mm. It's because he hadn't pre- learned why mm. and made it part of him rather than just a token of, I'll, I'll change like this and then it'll all be fine. It was mm. right. No, this is why I need to change. Mm. This is the impact it will have. Mm. So it's 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 more than just changing, isn't it? It's, Absolutely. It's very, it's very powerful film for, for, for behaviour change. I, I just yeah, talk about it all the time. It and, uh, yeah, so I, I think that's a great example. If you're struggling to kind of think, what well, what's the point? You know, here, here I go again. I've made the same mistake again. That film yeah. is a great, a great inspiration, I think. Which, which brings us, here we are. It's January. It's 2024. Mm. And chances are people went into kind of the Christmas period, the end of the year with a lot of good intentions. I'm not going to overeat. I'm not going to overindulge. I'm I'm going to keep active. I'm going to drink sensibly. And they might not have gone the way it planned. And let's be honest, it it happens. It happens. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the issues is people feel very ashamed of themselves. Mm -hmm. Um, They feel quite embarrassed. They feel they've let themselves down. And it's not about that, is it? Behaviour change isn't about that. Behaviour change, in some ways, knowing that it's gone a little bit wrong is a good point to start from because you can you can work from that. So, right, okay, why did it go wrong? What mm. what do I need to change so that by the time we get to next year, mm. um, next Christmas, mm. I'm I'm 
I have better control over mm. what I want to eat and when. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's, it's about the learning. Absolutely. And I, I think, um, you know, when it when it comes to sort of dealing with the aftermath of Christmas or any other um, event, whether it be a holiday or, or social occasion where we have overindulged perhaps more than we intended to I think it's recognizing that you know at, at a conscious level we might be thinking oh you know I've, I've mucked up and um, you know I'm useless and you know I, I can't control myself and all of that sort of thing but actually when we look at what's going on underneath the surface what we have to remember is that we're hardwired to enjoy food we're hardwired to eat as much food as possible when it's available and so we do we, there's a reason why our stomachs are stretchy it's yes. so that we can fit in food so that when it's there we eat as much of it as possible so that we then store the excess as fat so that we can use it later when food is scarce unfortunately for us the world we're living in for those of us who are fortunate to obviously know where all our next meals are coming from we um we are never in a position where food is scarce so we're never in a position where we have to actually use up that stored energy that we stored when we overindulge. Yeah. But of course, our bodies haven't changed. The world around us has changed, but our bodies haven't changed. So when we are finding ourselves in situations where food, highly desirable, highly tasty, highly calorific food is in front of us, we're designed to eat it. So we're going to do that. So actually trying to resist that, we are literally trying to fight our survival instincts. And our survival instincts are really strong. So yes. it's no wonder that we might overindulge. And it's important then to kind of recognise that that's what's happened. Just rather than beat ourselves up about it, it's like, well, how can I be aware of that next time and do something different next time? So how do we be aware of it and do something different? So what can we do? So somebody listening now is thinking, God, I did eat too much. I did drink too much. And I really didn't want to how do they get back on track now okay the first thing is forgive yourself yeah forgive yourself for being human and doing what humans do yeah because that's that's part of our makeup it's your survival instinct after all yeah absolutely so first of all let it all go let it all go because we can't change what we've already done but what we can do is we can we can learn from it and the way that i like to kind of think think about this i mean obviously People have different views on New Year's resolutions and, you know, New Year, New Start and all of that sort of thing. But actually, I think, you know, if you think about, again, how we evolve, I know New Year isn't quite, you know, from a, an evolutionary perspective, you know, we, it's a man-made thing, isn't it? First of January, it's a man-made thing. But you kind of think of it in the same way as like spring and new beginnings and all of that. It's actually, I think, OK, is a great opportunity to just review you know, what do we want to achieve in this this coming year? And therefore, what are the steps that we need to take to do that? But steps that we need to make that are achievable, that are comfortable, because as soon as we start doing things that are uncomfortable, we can cope with one or two uncomfortable things at any given time. But if we suddenly say, right, I need to overhaul my entire life and I'm going to go to the gym every day and I'm going to not eat any any, you know, unhealthy food, that for most of us is a step too far you know definitely it, it's like saying I'm going to declutter every single room in my house at the same time <laughs> you're not going to do it you no. know people will say start with one drawer in yeah. one room that's it that's it, it. And, yeah. and this is the thing isn't it it's yeah. like you wouldn't overhaul your entire house no. in one go at the same time no. No. you would do it in stages no. and Absolutely. it's the same isn't yeah. it with yeah behavior change it's yeah. it's kind of you might have a vision of where you want to be what you want to achieve mm. um but the way you get there starts now yeah not tomorrow not next week not the first of february or whatever yeah. it's right okay what can i do right now and that might be as simple as planning your meals for the next day mm. right yeah, now but this is yeah. small steps mm. so getting back on track isn't about you know, beating yourself up and saying, oh, no, I can't do it. Oh, it's awful. It's saying, right, OK, so how do I get back on track? Yeah. So What's one thing I can do today? Absolutely. And yeah. what, what are some of the simple things people can do? Um, well, I, th I think it depends on, I suppose, what, what people's priorities are and, and their preferences, because there's so many different ways that we can that we can you know manage our weight and you know there is no one single answer that's right for everybody but one of the things that I think it's important to try and understand is 
how much energy do we actually need to you know maintain our weight and that gives us then a good indication of how much energy we might need to 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 lose it so if we know that we're going into january having gained you know a few pounds potentially sometimes more i know for me it was you know I could easily put on a stone between the beginning of November and the end of December because I would just think, oh, there's no point in trying to do anything about it and then just eat all the food and drink and and then think, I'll sort it out in January. And then January would come and I'm like, oh, why did I do that? <laughs> you know? mm. um, but it's about understanding our energy needs because if you think about, you know, the way that we we we, we live, you know, we need energy to survive. We need, um, we all have our own individual amount of energy that we need to maintain our weight on a daily basis and obviously if we're gaining weight we're eating more than that and if we're losing weight we're eating less than that and if you think about when we go shopping um uh, or when we're when we buy anything we have to understand whether we can afford what we want to buy or not so we need to know how much money we've got in our bank account we need to know um you know how the prices of things so having a bit of an understanding about what things cost in an energy perspective can be really, really helpful. That doesn't mean to say you have to count every single calorie or track your food all the time, but just having an awareness of, you know, the, the you know, the government guidelines of, you know, for a, a typical woman, it's 2000 calories a day for a typical man. It's somewhere between 2000, 2500. If we're consistent, con- if we're consistently exceeding that, we're going to put on weight, aren't we? And equally, if we want to lose weight, we've got to come underneath that somehow. So if we don't know the energy values of what we're consuming, it's a bit like going shopping with the contactless card, not looking at the prices and never looking at our bank account. And we wouldn't say to someone who was struggling with their money, well, it's okay, don't worry about looking at your bank account. Don't worry about looking at the prices. Spend what you like. Do what you like. So it's the same kind of principle. The difficulty is, of course, we get very emotionally attached to what we eat. So what we need to try and do is rather than think about this from an emotional perspective is think, you know, from a practical perspective, how much do things cost? How much do things cost in terms of energy? And what do I actually need to consume um, in order to to look after my health? You know, and obviously we need to look at the quality of what we're consuming as well as the quantity. So just raising our awareness um, because it is so, so easy to overeat in this in in this um, the world that we live in you know 120 calories a day more than we need puts on a stone in a year and of course if we've put on that over christmas um as i you used to do you know it's then it's so much harder to lose weight than it is to gain it unfortunately because it's mm-hmm. harder to create that calorie deficit and still get the nutrition that we need so so just having a basic awareness of of, of what we're consuming i think is 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 useful and perhaps look at where we can start making very small changes to what we're doing and and I do encourage people when I work with them to just keep a food diary not not without any judge not with any targets or any any judgments but just simply what am I eating because it's so so easy to eat mindlessly it's so so easy to eat and not pay attention to what we're eating whereas when we, we keep some kind of record of what we're eating whether it's simply just a pen and paper and just writing down what we add then we can start to look at well, you know, what 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 small changes could I make that are going to have minimal impact on my enjoyment of life, minimal impact on on, um, you know, the, the the taste, minimum impact on on, you know, what I'm consuming, but could potentially have quite a big impact on our waistline. And this is the thing, isn't it? It's those small changes. And, you know, your first step might be to actually work out, and you can do this online, roughly how many calories a day you need mm. and look at as well. Actually, gosh, if I was a little bit more active, my requirements would go up slightly. That's a good thing. Mm-hmm. And I'll often say to people, if, if they're sort of having, oh, well, I always have a couple of biscuits with my morning coffee. Mm-hmm. Um, I have a couple of digestives. It's right. OK, well, maybe swap to something like two ginger nuts. So you're still getting your two biscuits, mm-hmm. but actually they've probably got half the calories in. Mm-hmm. So that's one small swap. Mm-hmm. You're not depriving yourself. Mm-hmm. But after a while, it will be like, well, maybe I'll just have one or maybe mm-hmm. I'll take my coffee to go mm-hmm. and go for a walk. Mm-hmm. And it. it once you know I always say you can't change habits until you know what you're doing and this is where knowing what you eat means you can look at it and think well I ate that I didn't need it it was way too close to my meal time or it was way too soon after my meal time um and and I think that is a really important first step is without any judgment or or um 
kind of hiding anything. It's just literally write down what you eat over a three day period yeah, and some, see. Some people okay. find taking photographs is helpful because there's no yeah. writing down involved, but it's like, oh, and then you, you've got that visual representation because some people find it easier to, to look at things visually and some people find it easier to, to write things down. Some people record it on a, on a, a, a you know, a, a, a food tracking app and you know it doesn't matter what you do as long as it works for you that's that's the that's the key thing and as long as you're recording everything because there's no good only yeah. recording half the stuff because that's not going to give you the full picture awareness is the first step and then it then it's looking at you know small changes I mean one of one of my clients recently she's just sw- switched her um the milk in her coffee because she has a has a, a every morning a, 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 a lovely drink that she likes to have she's just switched from full fat to semi-skimmed yeah you know that's a really small switch that can over time make quite a big impact on the amount of energy she's consuming and if you if you buy your coffee in coffee shops it's going Mm. from a medium to a small Mm. or a large to a medium Mm. don't make big changes all at once because you'll notice them Mm. what you want to do is make subtle changes that Mm. that you don't really Mm. notice Mm. and i think that's one of the keys isn't it and it's like you're not going to suddenly start becoming more active and go out for a a half an hour run no. if if you've been sat down for the last two months doing very little exactly but, like guys if you're used to overeating a lot trying to suddenly mm-hmm. go on a diet is going to be a way step too far let's get some stability going in what you're currently doing and then get you ready to then put you in a position where you can actually start start losing so i think this is where trying not to go from one extreme to the other is is, yep. is really important and just sort of coming back to that kind of like January kind of reset kind of feeling I think you know it's about rather than going right okay in January I'm going to cut everything out and I'm going to change everything all at once it's in January I'm going to take stock I'm going to take yes. stock of what I'm doing and then I'm going to start building in small changes here and there and and over time those small changes can can add up and it's you know start with the thing that's going to have the the quickest win with the 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 the, the least in the least effort um yeah. and it's getting that 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 balance right and then building on that as time goes on Uh, but also recognizing that some of the things obviously when it comes to eating and drinking knowing what we're consuming is obviously going to be the most important thing and making changes to that but also we have to think about what are the softer things that go around that so if we're having a rubbish night's sleep for example trying to make ourselves do something that perhaps we know we're not particularly enamored about changing it's much harder when we're feeling rubbish whereas yes. if we've had a good night's sleep we're feeling stressed we we're feeling fresh and we we're enthusiastic it's much easier to to commit to so it may be a case of before we even start addressing what we're eating and drinking do we need to address our sleep patterns patterns because that yeah. may be having a big influence on our ability to then implement what we're trying to do and, and things like building activity and whether it's a, a stretch, you know, a nice stretch or mm. a, a short walk, mm. um, a brisk walk. Mm. Maybe if you if you normally walk to the shops quite mm. slowly, then maybe just still walk to the shops, but mm. a brisker pace. Mm. Um, if you're not used to, you know, if you if you've spent the last couple of months not doing much activity, mm. again, you're not going to go snap back into it, you know, mm. straight away. So it's OK what's something I'd like to do? Oh, I'd like to go for a walk. I'd like mm. to walk to my friend's house and have a coffee with her. Mm. I'd like to do some stretching or, mm. you know, think about things that you can easily build into your day or mm. things that you're doing in your day that you can make a little bit more beneficial by by doing for slightly longer or slightly quicker or, or things like that. And I, I think, you know, it's the expectation is with New Year that we're going to mm. suddenly have all these new things that we're going to do and it's going to be successful in actual fact i think around half of us set new year's resolutions Mm -hmm. only eight or nine percent actually achieve them Mm -hmm. most people have given up by february so for me it's also thinking why do i want to make this change what will i gain how will it enhance my life so it's not just i want to eat more healthily or i want to lose weight or i want to be more active what will doing that give you or in how will it enhance your life absolutely and it's, it's about being able to pin it on something really valuable and for me it was about looking at my health and thinking yeah. I don't want it at the, the time when I was really tackling this I was in my mid-30s I'm now 50 and my 50 um, being 50 is it, I'm in a very different place to where I would have been if I had carried on with the lifestyle I was leading back then and 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 I look back now and you know I, I, I thank my my former self for having the 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 courage and the determination to make the changes that I did back then because now 
I'm living the life that that I wanted to live and I've done so many things that I never would have done if I hadn't made those changes and and but it's and this is it it's it's the bigger picture isn't it the bigger vision if you like so it your your bigger vision might be um the summer Mm. or the autumn something Mm. that you're planning to do then it might be it might be 10 years time it might be 20 years time it might be looking at your life and saying right if I carry on the way I am what will my life look like in 20 years time compared to if I make these changes what will my life look like what will I be doing and sometimes that can make people think crikey actually this is but again don't think you're going to go from eating unhealthily or eating foods that are less healthy Mm. to eating only healthy foods overnight a it's not practical it's not realistic because there's always going to be foods with different nutritional values no fun either but yeah but also it you know you you, it's like anything you like i said before but you wouldn't you wouldn't go out after years of sitting on the sofa you wouldn't go out and run a 5k you would follow the steps that are very gradual which might be a five minute walk Mm. Uh, you know and yeah. this is why there are programs like couch to 5k and things yeah. it's about those yeah. small steps yeah. that take you from the couch to the 5k it's it about doesn't learning. happen overnight and it's about the yeah. learning and the building up of the skills and and I often describe my work as a bit like learning to drive because it actually takes months to relearn how to eat you know? yes and then and then and then be able to implement that on a lifelong basis so you know we apart from obviously those people who take an intensive seven day driving driving um, course which personally I know wouldn't have been right for me because I need that time to absorb and assimilate mm. the learning but you know it takes months to learn to drive it took me nine months from getting in the car the first time to actually passing my test and um, the way that I, I kind of talk about my work is it's about changing attitudes and behaviors and beliefs you know yes. and practice lots and lots of practice of doing things and getting it wrong but trying again just like when we learn to drive you have to get familiar with how to work the machine and then you have to get familiar with reading the roadsides reading the traffic understanding you know what you're what you're doing um and becoming and feeling confident and competent in that and it's the same with any change that we're trying to do in life we have to go through the learning process there's no shortcut to it we can't just go from being where we are to where we want to be overnight and we tend to expect when we're trying to lose weight that that's what's going to happen and it's never and going it, to it does but it's also thinking about everything else around it's not just about the food you eat and when you eat and things like that it's also like going back to the running thing it's about the shoes that you wear the clothes that you wear the weather the people around you different circumstances um and again, your 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 existing fitness level, your existing the way you eat. So it's about all of that. You know, you have to take into account your social life, your family life, um, your your cooking skills, even because if suddenly you're going into cooking healthy foods and you haven't got a clue how, that's going to derail you. So it's so much more than just saying these are the foods that I'm going to focus on. There's there's so much more around it. And I think with any um, any habits, any things that you want to either give up or adopt in the new year and I'm all about I'm all about adopting positive habits because I think the more positive habits we have the more the negative ones get nudged out when you the minute you think about giving up or stopping it's kind of like no I don't want to do that whereas if you think about what you're going to gain what you're going to start doing it's more positive and I think but all of that you you have to be realistic about your circumstances and about where you are and anyone who's done a course with me will know one of my big sayings is start where you are if at the moment your diet is not where you want it to be start with one small change and then another small change and then do it do it gradually and you know don't expect like you say it's not going to happen overnight and it won't be sustainable if you do it quickly but the more gradually you do it the more you embed it into your normal life the more it'll get there so whatever your visions or goals or aims are for 2024 you know start start where you are and do it very very gradually because you won't notice the changes until they all start adding up no that's it and it's about kind of you know if you know revisiting perhaps previous new year's resolutions that you might have made and thought well what was the reason that you only lasted till february and actually does that mean that um the resolution itself was maybe not appropriate and what could you do instead 
you know, and, um, you know, what, what's better for your life, you know. Than I often call them New Year revolutions because it's the same one every year. And I think what people get really, really good at is setting the same goals and failing them every year or not achieving them. And, and actually this year, do something different. Think of something different or think, think beyond the actual aim into why. How, what will this do for you? How will it benefit your life? How will you feel? Maybe, maybe think about feelings much more than, than outcomes. Think about how you'll feel when you've achieved it, what you'll be able to do that you can't do now. Yeah, and I, I can tell you now, sitting here, um, every, every day, there's not a day that goes by where I don't feel grateful the, for the fact that I have got the freedom from the struggle with food. You know, I don't struggle yeah. with food. I haven't done for years. And that, it's like the, it's the absence of something. It's hard to measure, but it, it, the, the freedom of, of not having to worry about that, the, the literally the weight that it lifted off my mind as well as my body yeah. has been so transformative. You know, I am a completely different person and people look at fit, pictures of me and think, is that you? And I'm like, yeah, it, it was. And I'm very grateful to that person because I am, I'm who I am today because I lived that as that person before. And, and I'm now able to pay that forward. But it's for most of us, the things that, that matter the most, if you like. I mean, yes, we all have goals where we've got a very measurable outcome. It's like, well, yeah, I've done it. Look, there we go. Mm. But sometimes it, there isn't a point where you go, I've done it. It's just mm. it, there's a point where you look back mm. and think, actually, mm. I've been free from eating issues for, for a while now. Yeah, it's just it. become part of who I am. It's not like... Oh goodness! I've woken up on Monday morning and I'm free, yeah. and I've you hit my goal date. I've hit my yeah. goal date. Yeah. yeah, it's 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 yeah. that looking back and thinking, actually, gosh, I've I've been doing this automatically for a while. This is part of who I am now, and I think that that yeah, that's a much bigger achievement than right. I've lost the weight. It's the point where you. Yeah, yeah, that might be you think right. Yeah, I've lost all the weight I gained over Christmas, but actually there'll be a point, another point where you think. I've changed the way I approach eating. I've changed the way I approach food. And that's not, you can't set that as a goal. You can't say on the 29th of February, I will have changed the way. It'll be something that you suddenly realise has happened that's it. That was as part it was, of the tiny little changes. That's it. it was a bit, for me, it was sort of like seven years into my my success that I kind of thought, I've achieved something here that not many people have achieved and I need to help other people to do this because what is it about what I've done? And, and, and it, and it, it took me, yeah, you know, several years to actually appreciate what I left behind because I never set out to leave that behind. That wasn't part of my vision. My, my vision was not to be free of struggles from overeating. My vision was just, I just wanted to be a healthy weight. Yeah. But it brought so much more to me than that. You know, and, and actually I never reached my goal weight. You know, and I don't want to reach my goal weight because my goal weight was like a bit of a red herring. It was the change in lifestyle, the change in, in how I feel every day. Um, the weight started to become irrelevant, especially when I started weight training, because yeah. I was never gonna then reach my original goal weight because muscle weighs, <laughs> you know, and when you when you've got muscle yeah you have to accept that you're going to be, you're going to weigh more, but I'm still smaller, you know? So. And that's the thing, isn't it? Yeah. And it's, it, I think, it's all, it's just not about the weight, you know, it's about and so I, I think more than that. This is where, you know, yes, I know some people need goals. They need specific outcomes to work towards and that's fine. But I think even then always think about what beyond that, once I've achieved that, then what, you know, what, what will I do to maintain it? What will I do to build on it? What will I do to, how will it enhance my life? Um, and, it, you know, like you say, if, if for a lot of people, it's if I lose this weight, then I will have more energy and I will be able to do this. And that's the true outcome. It, it's kind of what's the superficial outcome, if you like, and what's the deep outcome. And I think the mistake so many people make when they're setting their New Year's resolutions, their goals or whatever, is they look at the superficial outcome. They don't look at that deeper much more meaningful emotional outcome i'll be able to keep up with my friends i'll be able to do this i'll be able to skydive or whatever they want to do it's it's a much bigger outcome but it's one that we often don't really take the time to think about and i think i I don't and i also don't think that we necessarily can think about it 
in the same way until we get there. And, you know, it's, it's like when, when I, I, I my, my husband was my very first client when I first started out and I helped him to lose four and a half stone, which he's kept off. And I remember asking him at the beginning, how do you feel, you know, about about the weight that you're carrying at the moment? Oh, it's just a, you know, it's just a bit inconvenient. You know, his his concern was more about the fact that he had high blood pressure, and that was the main driver. Mm. Thing was to obviously get that number down, so he didn't have to go on medication. That was his main reason for losing the weight. But obviously, as he lost the weight and he started to have more energy and started to be able to do more things physically, he started to realise just how much carrying all the extra weight had made him feel. But he didn't realise it until he mm. no longer had it. That's it. And that's the things we don't see the gap until later down the line. And, you know, for me, living the life that I'm living now is not ever something that I had even had the intention of, of, of doing. But here I am doing it because of all the doors losing the weight unlocked for me along the way um, that I never envisaged would happen. So it's really hard, I think, to kind of step into that future self with clarity. But if we know that our intentions are that we want to feel better. <laughs> then you know even just day to day the actions that we take that yeah. will make us feel better by moving more by eating better quality food by eating the right amount of food by eating in the right way by sleeping well by hydrating well by doing all of those things day to day they're going to make us feel better so we want to we want to we will want to repeat those things and then That's step it. by step we'll get to the end result without even focusing on it if that makes sense yeah, it does totally, and it's it's something again. I'll always, you know, I'll always ask if I'm if I'm going to do something, and I think, oh, you know, I'm going to do this, that, and I think, you know, what impact will this have on my progress? What impact will this have on what I want to achieve? Um, it might be I'm writing a book at the moment, and it might be oh, I can't be bothered to write today. What impact is that going to have on my progress? Actually, it's going to slow me down. So I'll just write an introductory chapter, an introduction to one of the chapters. So I'll just do that today. So I might not be in the mood to write the whole thing. But I'll just set myself a small task because I know if I don't do it, I'll lose momentum and it will take me much longer to actually get the whole thing written. So I think sometimes it's, you know, yeah, here's a big family bag of crisps. What impact is this going to have? Actually, it's not going to be good for me. So what I'll do is I'll I'll have a few and put the rest of the bag away. So it's not saying I won't have them, but it's once you start thinking about the impact that it might have on your progress or on the way you feel, then I think you make much better decisions. Not necessarily I'm not going to have that, but actually I'll have less or I'll I'll, I'll wait until tomorrow. And it or, comes back to using our rational brain, as I was talking about in our Christmas podcast, about the, the fact that our primitive instincts drive our desire for food and we have to learn how to use the more rational part of our brain, the part of our brain that makes us human, in making the decisions about food and when we do that everything everything changes and one of the things that I like to talk about with my clients is you know when we're focusing on what are the actions that we need to take to get us to where we want to be because that actually is what needs to to change it's all very well thinking about it but it's doing that makes the difference is if you imagine that you know we're, we're walking on a, a hike to the top of a hill and we look at the hill and we go, god that's a long way I don't think I can do that Whereas if we think, well, actually, how do we get to the top of that hill? It's literally putting one foot in front of the other repeatedly. And so all we need to do is look at, well, what's the general direction and where am I going to put my foot next? And that if we focus in on that and trust that by repeating those actions, we'll get to the top of that hill. We don't even need to look at it. (laughs) It's also sometimes you think, gosh, that's really, really steep. Is there a slightly less steep path? Mm -hmm. There might be a less steep path that takes longer, but you'll still get there. Exactly. And, so and it's sometimes okay it to is. take a little diversion every now and then. As long as you've kind yeah. of got a rough idea of where the top of the hill is, you can then turn back around at any time. Yeah. You, know, you don't have to keep walking off in the opposite direction. So for all of the people listening and getting back on track, for me, mm. definitely, it's have a vision. Mm. It doesn't have to be rigidly fixed and everything, but just have a kind of idea of, mm. of where you're going. Mm. Um, what else would you say? Take it one day at a time. One day, and one and step. Ev- and every day is a new opportunity. It doesn't matter what you did before. Just use yeah. it as an opportunity for to learning and take that into the next day rather than use it as an opportunity to beat yourself up if it didn't go to Yeah. Much. So none of that, today's been awful, yesterday was awful type thing. It's mm-hmm. okay, how am I going to move myself forward today? 
yeah what so minimum thing yeah, you can do yeah. because every, every step forward mm. is progress yeah Absolutely. Even even staying still yeah. is progress. Yeah, absolutely, especially if you would previously have been going backwards. Yeah, so I think that would be it. But um, for me, it's make those steps very small, make them small, make them easy, because that a it, it, it's all working towards your progress. But also, I think the smaller and the easier they are, the more you achieve them, and the more your confidence builds. And you think, do you know, it's not just I can do this. You go from I think I can do this. To I can do this. To I am doing this, and then I've done it. And then the next thing you set yourself may well be bigger, but you know you can do it. And for me, that's it. Do even at the end of the day, this is what I did today. This is what I achieved. I had one less biscuit. I ate an extra portion of vegetables. Even small things like that. It's a pat on the back. It's that kind of I'm doing this. This is me. Anything else, any other advice then you would give for people who are at the moment thinking, oh, oh it, my new year hasn't gone the way I wanted it to? I think it's, 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 it's making sure you've got the right foundation in place. There's no, no point in trying to change your eating behaviours if your life is so chaotic that you can't actually do anything yeah. consistent. So it's perhaps looking at the bigger picture and think, well, how can I make a bit of a bit more stable foundation in order to build on the changes so rather than going straight in for the food it might be looking at as I said earlier it might be looking at you know what's your sleep like what's your daily routine mm. like um so that you can create that foundation to then build on yeah and that's the important thing isn't it it's 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 the bigger picture it's not just I'm going to change the way I eat it's it's looking at how you can make it easier with the rest of your life um, and, you know, and don't, yeah. You know, again, we're all about creating active lives here. But remember, you know, being more active, whether it's a walk or a stretch or a swim, whatever you fancy doing, all all helps. And I think as you notice that you can walk more easily, you can swim more easily, you can stretch more easily, that boosts your confidence and that boosts your motivation because you're thinking, gosh, actually, this is making a difference. And that noticing those differences is to me is one of the biggest motivators because it you think no gosh if i can if i notice this already then i'm going to notice even more just, just eating eating and in a better way and being more active is going to make it more you know it's going to make you feel better and more likely to then be able to do more yeah. and it is yeah. it's, it's not not focusing just on the weight but focusing on how nourishing our bodies and minds makes us feel better and when we feel better we want to keep going and that's the big thing it goes from i need to do this or i, I have to do this mm-hmm. it's that switch into i want, I want to, to do, do this, this because yeah. i'm enjoying it yeah and that's yeah. to me the big point is that's making really sure you've got that enjoyment because yeah. that will keep you going yeah. claire thank you so much and it's been a really interesting couple of episodes actually mm-hmm. on on this and realistic as well we're not saying to people oh you know first january you've got to stop eating stop drinking stop doing everything what we're saying is do not don't beat yourself up um just start today yeah absolutely and thank you very much for having me (laughs) yeah it's been a pleasure i'm sure we will speak again at some point you can follow claire on all social media outlets at your one life uk and i will make sure the links to contact her are in the in in the podcast information and do follow her because she does do some lovely challenges for people every quarter just to sort of support change so let's do this claire thank you so much for coming you've been listening to me sarah belitha and my guest claire jones talking about getting back on track i'm off out for a walk hopefully you all are too take care and see you soon Thank you for listening to Creating Active Lives with me, Sarah Belifto, and my guests. Join me each week for more on how to create and sustain everyday activity and follow me online at Fitness Career Mentor or Fab Newless if you're interested in career development and more on creating active lifestyles.